OpenTX 2.3.12 is here. And that's really exciting because, I mean, there hasn't been an OpenTX update in a long freaking time. So, hey, OpenTX, nice to know you're still out there. Uh, but also, OpenTX 2.3.12 has finally added one of the features that we've been waiting for OpenTX to give us for a long freaking time. We're going to talk about what that feature is and, and what OpenTX left out and uh, some directions you might want to go instead if there's still things OpenTX isn't giving you. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. The feature that OpenTX 2.3.12 gives us that we've been waiting for for a long freaking time, well, it's commonly known as Crossfire Shot. But even if you don't use Crossfire, there's still a big, big performance advantage to having this feature. See, inside the radio, there is a function called the mixer. And the mixer is what outputs the control signals to the module. Now, I'm pointing here at this module bay in the back of this radio, but there's a RF module inside the radio as well. It doesn't really matter which module you're using. The mixer sends signals to the module and then the module sends those signals out to your receiver, right? And those two things have not been synced up. And what that means is that, like, imagine, imagine that there's a, a, you know, a subway train and the train comes every 10 minutes, right? And you show up just as one train was leaving. And now you're going to have to wait 10 minutes for the next train to come. Or maybe you show up just as the train pulls up and you only have to wait for like a few seconds. The point is that when there isn't synchronization between the data being ready to go from the mixer and the module being ready to receive the data, that creates inconsistency in the packet timings and that creates jitter is, is the technical term for it. And the bottom line is that that makes your RC control link worse. It causes the average latency goes up. I'm pretty sure about that. And the the jitter, the consistency in the latency is all over the place. And that means that the PID controller can't do as good a job as it wants to do. There's been a lot of focus in the latest versions of Betaflight and other control firmwares in the effect of the receiver control signal consistency and how we can deal with inconsistent control signals and ways that we can improve performance with more consistent control signals. In fact, Mark Spatz, UAV Tech, has some videos about which control links are more and less consistent, and I'll put a link to those down in the video description. But here's the takeaway. It doesn't matter if you're using FreeSky R9, which has consistency all over the place, at least the ACCST version of it did, or if you're using something like Express LRS, which has very, very consistent, oh, amazingly low jitter, it doesn't matter if there is not synchronization between the mixer and the module because that will introduce additional jitter. And what this bug fix accomplishes is it synchronizes the mixer and the module. Now, this has been available to you already if you have been downloading the TBS nightly build of Crossfire Shot. But uh, what Crossfire Shot? What is that? Some people don't even realize that Crossfire Shot is not like a new protocol, like Crossfire Ghost, Express LRS. It's not a new protocol. Crossfire Shot just means that this heartbeat sync bug has been fixed in this custom build of OpenTX to provide lower and more consistent latency. But that old that version of Crossfire Shot, I, what was it, 239, 2310? There's things that have been added. We want to be on the latest and greatest. If you're running the Immersion RC Ghost nightly build of OpenTX or the Express LRS version of, night, of OpenTX, those are nightly builds that have, have already integrated this heartbeat sync fix, commonly known as Crossfire Shot. But I kind of don't like that because it misleads you into thinking that it only applies to Crossfire, and that's just not true. Those have already implemented that, but maybe you don't like the idea of running a nightly build. Maybe you're tired of seeing that warning, caution, nightly build every time you turn it on, or maybe you just feel better being in a official release. OpenTX 2.3.12 is here. 
Now, if you want to download OpenTX 2.3.12 and install it, I am going to do it. I'm going to run through it real quick during this video, but I have a couple other tutorials that go into more detail on the things I'm going to show you. I will link them down in the video description. This is not really a tutorial on how to update your radio. I do have those. They'll be linked down below. I do want to say, though, there's things we're still waiting for, OpenTX. OpenTX 2.4. Oh, we pr promised we're going to get touchscreen support for the RadioMaster TX16. This is not, this is actually a jumper. It doesn't have a touchscreen. I, I figured if I was going to do a video where I upgraded one of my radios, I would use one of the radios I don't actually fly on a daily basis just in case something went wrong. Um, so I'm not doing it on my Radio Master. We don't get touchscreen support for the Radio Master, which is promised in OpenTX 2.4. We don't yet have. Do we have support for Ghost Protocol? We'll check that. I'm not sure about that. We don't yet have support for the Tango 2, the TBS Tango 2. You still have to run this custom version of Freedom TX, which is fine, but it isn't supported in OpenTX Companion, which means that you can't easily download and save your, your models. OpenTX 2.4 still has a lot to bring us. And that is why I'm immediately after I finish this video, I'm going to record another video about Edge TX. And Edge TX is basically like Betaflight to OpenTX's Clean Flight. For those of you who haven't been around long enough, uh, Clean Flight was well established. The development slowed down a little bit for various reasons, and the Beta Flight developers were like, hey, let's just run with this. Let's just do everything, do all kinds of crazy stuff, be fast and loose and break things. And, you know, they didn't they didn't want to wait. And now Betaflight, of course, is what the majority of people fly. So who knows what will happen with Edge TX. But Edge TX is basically some developers who said, we're tired of waiting for OpenTX 2.4. Let's fork this baby and just do our own work. I'm going to be making a video about that if that sounds interesting. So get subscribed and hit the notification bell so you don't miss it when it does come out. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and update OpenTX 2.3.12. And the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to download Companion. OpenTX Companion 2.3.12. I'll download the latest version of Companion and install it. And we'll go ahead and run OpenTX Companion 2.3. And at this point, I'm going to flash the radio. And there are three main ways to flash an OpenTX radio. I've got a video about how to do all three of them. Sometimes the way I'm going to show you in this video doesn't work because like your computer's drivers are messed up or for various other reasons. If you have any trouble flashing OpenTX at any time, there's a link in the video description to a video that can show you how to do it. Even if your radio is like completely bricked, this is how to bring it back from the dead. So uh, let's go ahead and download this firmware. Sure, we'll download it and we'll save it. I have a place where I save these firmware files. OpenTX backups, yeah, that's where I put them. And then, let's see, settings, radio profiles. I don't actually have a radio profile for the Jumper T18, so we're gonna add a new radio profile. Jumper T18. Uh, my radio type is, there it is, Jumper T18 is my radio type. I'm gonna pick some of these options. Uh, so I always choose the no heli option because I don't fly collective pitch helicopters. Uh, that gets rid of some options that you don't need. Uh, let's see, we want Lua support, and uh, I don't see, it used to be you'd have to select internal module, but I guess that's not needed. They must have built that in. I always like to make a new folder for each radio, and I'll put the, oops, no. I'll put the SD card contents in there, and the backup folder is gonna be Jumper T18. Yep. Um, yeah, and we'll enable that. Okay, that's great. We got our profile created. Next, I'm going to turn the radio on. Welcome to OpenTX. Ew, test build warning. Well, let's get rid of that. People always ask, can you turn that off? Not unless you're a programmer and know how to compile. We're gonna, with the radio on, we'll plug in USB. Once I do that, I'll get this message, and I'll click USB storage. And having done that, these two USB drives will pop up. I'm going to close the one that contains firmware.bin and firmware.txt. This is my SD card. I'm just going to set that aside for a minute. And I will do read write, read models and settings from radio. Uh, there are no models on this one. But the reason we're doing this is that we want to back up our models and settings in case anything goes wrong. You should always do this before you flash new firmware to your radio. I'll do uh, file, 
save as and in that folder that I made I will just call this before uh, 2.3.12 update dot OTX okay great and then we're done there next I will click file download and I will download firmware I will save that to my hard drive and I will also hit download SD contents, which will take me to this page. And I guess I'm going to pick the latest version, 3V038. I guess I'm not 100% sure that's right. We'll see after we flash it, but we'll go ahead and download that and we'll, co we'll come back to that zip file in a second. Having done that, I will click read write, write firmware to radio. And it should auto load that file that I just downloaded and I'll hit write to TX. And that's working. Yeah, okay. So oftentimes that won't work and we'll have to use one of the other three methods that I gave in the video down below how to flash your radio. Um, we're gonna go, since that didn't work, we're gonna go to method number two, which is to hold in the trim switches and power up at the same time. There we go. With USB unplugged, it works. Great. Now we're in bootloader mode. We're gonna see if we can plug in USB and flash this way. Right from where to radio. Oh, phooey. That's not going to work either. I bet you. I bet you. Let's try it. Mm -hmm. That worked. Amazing. So we'll unplug USB and Welcome power to up. Uh, okay. SD card warning. That's good. That means our update was successful. To clear the SD card warning, I like to just take the SD card out of the radio. Here, let me power it down first. I like to just take the SD card out of the radio because the USB interface on these radios is usually pretty slow and it takes forever to update the U USB contents. All right, here's my USB card with the wrong contents on it. And here in my downloads folder is that zip file. We're just going to extract that zip file. I'm just going to delete everything off this SD card. If you've got anything on it like custom sounds or custom images, you would save them off and then put them back after you update the contents. Uh, in addition, you could copy over your Lua scripts and stuff, like if you have the Betaflight Lua script or the, um, the Crossfire uh, Agent Light script, but I actually usually just re-download because oftentimes those will have updated as well since the last time. So I'll just re-download re them. So I'll delete these contents. Hey folks, Joshua from the future. Don't delete all of the contents. Save your models and your radio folder and then preserve them when you copy over the new SD card contents. That will avoid the bad radio data error that pops up on me later in this video. I only just discovered this and I'm making a whole separate video about it. But for now, preserve your models and radio folders. Off the SD card. And here is the zip file contents. I'm going to drag that over. Alrighty, that's done. We'll go ahead and just set this back inside the radio. How? <laughs> what a stupid place to put the SD card. How are you supposed to... There we go. Okay. And this is why we backed up our radio before we did this, because at any point when you're updating, you just never know when the radio might say, you know, I think something isn't right and just reset itself. And if we, because we backed up in OpenTX Companion, we can... Welcome to OpenTX. Thank you. Because we can, uh, we can just restore our, our radio to the way it was. Hang on, let's run through this calibration real quick. I won't make you watch that. Now at this point we could connect the radio via USB, do file open, open up that OTX file and do write models and settings to radio and restore everything back the way it was. So definitely back up your radio before you do an update like this. Oh yeah, the other thing I, we still haven't answered is, is uh, Immersion RC Ghost now supported? Before we go, let's just go ahead and check that. External RF mode. Oh yeah, it is supported. So if you're using Immersion RC Ghost, I believe there is now no longer a need for you to use the Ghost Nightly. Uh, if you're using Crossfire, no longer a need for you to use the Crossfire Shot Nightly. If you're using Express LRS, I'm not actually sure what the Express LRS custom build of OpenTX does. People have told me you can run Express LRS on just the standard build, so not sure about that. Uh, 
And if you're running a Tango 2 uh, and you're waiting for support in uh, OpenTX Companion, or if you're running a Radio Master and you want your touchscreen to work, uh, screw you. Uh, can't have it yet. Thanks for watching. Happy flying. What are you doing in here? The least you could do is subscribe or join my Patreon or like just here's another video I picked out for you. Jeez.